Hi, welcome to another evening walk. It's actually the afternoon. You can probably tell because you can hear other people out and about a little uh, wood chopping. Is that what I hear going on? Something like that. Got some lawn mowing going on. I was going to mow the front lawn today. I woke up. My parents had already done it. These old people waking up so early. I get out of bed to get going. They've already done all the fucking chores and shit. What the hell? Okay. I don't know. Alright, fine. <laughs> Whatever. I'll... I'll take it, I guess. I don't know. Limo. This is actually going to be the very first of these walks. New type of content on the channel. Thought I'd take this one to explain exactly what this is going to be. It's going to be... Similar to my other content, unedited, uh, unfiltered, unplanned, truly random ass rants. With some, uh, you know, original music in the background. To make the parts where I just shut the fuck up and, and think about what I'm saying <laughs> more interesting. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? I want to give you the real raw shit. You know? Direct access to the brain stem. I want to put bad things on the internet. Not this polished good stuff, thoughtful, researched ideas, <laughs> nerd, <laughs> I want to impress upon you that, uh, you know, People are shit, you are shit, but I am also shit. And we are all shit on this shitty earth together. Isn't that great? Isn't that a beautiful thing? Love is beautiful, and that is why life is shit. Truly. <laughs> Truly, what a ride we are on. As it stands, I think I have six of these recorded. I don't count. Like I said, it's scuffed. Six of these rants are already recorded on this little phone. Ready to blast off, because I'm not going to edit these. You're getting it raw and uncut. There is one where I just, like, stop talking for a while, because I forget I was talking. Because I was a little high when I recorded that one, okay? It is what it is. <laughs> Alright. That's how these things are going to be like. That's what kind of content this is. Alright. If you want engaging key jingling. Or you know. Well thought out ideas. With backed up by facts and logic. Uh. Go away. <laughs> go on. Turn on something else, find good videos, stop wasting your time with this trash content. But for those of you who are, you know, absolutely zooted on some fucking, on the resin from your bong, and you have no idea what the fuck is going on right now, welcome. For the returning viewers, welcome back. This is the new thing for now. The secret streams, unfortunately, although I loved them, 
I love doing them. They are on hold for now. The bit rate just is not there with our ISP right now on the uploads. It's fucking classic American internet being trash. Extremely sad. I think it's also a combination of uh, uh, other things. There's a lot of shit going on in, in the tech world and cloud computing spaces and things right now. They're making the entire internet worse for everybody. It's so cool. <laughs> so good. Awesome. But anyway, that side of the content will have to come back at a later time when I can uh, adjust my own situation, which I'm working on. Nothing going yet, but hey, we're making some strides, we're making some contacts. That's a really big thing. Networking, the most important thing for job hunting, which is annoying as fuck, because I hate interacting with people. They're stupid. That's right. You. You listening. You're dumb as shit. But like I said, we're all dumb as shit. You're gonna hear me say the stupidest fucking shit on this thing, because I'm just gonna talk my dumbass ideas. And I'm not gonna give you any pretense that these ideas are some, you know, oh yeah, this guy, he's got the answers. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, okay? I am making up bullshit. But that's what it is, that's how it goes. That's how you do it. That's the juice, as the juicer says. So like I mentioned, we got uh, six of these already recorded. But I'm going to keep recording them going forward in time. And I'm just going to put out the ones that I like the most whenever it's time to put one out maybe two or three times a week starting now once i can get a workflow for for cooking them up the way i want to i think it'll be something that i'll just enjoy doing and part of why i'm doing this is because i'm, I'm taking a walk while i do this and i, I want to walk around our block more because we have a nice block here pretty safe Every so often people's cars get broken into, but nothing like assault or anything like that. Gun violence in this neighborhood. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> oh God. I'm taking these walks, trying to get my steps in, trying to stretch out my hip muscles and, and engage my core and you know keep the legs active so I don't die of blood clots and whenever I'm walking I just end up fucking ranting like an insane person because I have mental issues <laughs> no I mean that's just how my mind is and I, I just don't care about what people think of me so I just I just talk I just talk out loud to myself you know it's me and me against me that's really it I thought I'd share that with all of you, so you can, uh, you know, increase your parasocial engagement with my life and uh, become insane stands who I wield as a weapon against all my haters. You know what I mean? The Does Army. We're going to bring this up. All of you here now, you are the avant-garde. We're, we're waging war, okay? Get ready. <laughs> okay. A little bit of a filter on what I say. Just a slight filter on what I say. Sometimes. <laughs> on these, you'll hear me laugh to myself. I just didn't say something. That's probably illegal to say. So, you know. We're just gonna move on. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
stupid. Ooh, someone on the block is smoking good right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I see you. I literally saw it. <laughs> Hell yeah, brother. Hell yes, dude. Support that. Uncritical support for getting lit on a beautiful Sunday. But how it's gonna work is I'm making these, I'm recording them, I'm just putting out whatever. The more likes and subs these get, the more views and hater comments these get, and if you're a hater, listen, please comment some insane shit. I need to farm that for Twitter posts, you know? Like, come on. Where are you at? I know that you're out there. <laughs> I, I, you blocked me, I know. I can tell. I know what's up. Uh-huh. Let's go. Let's fucking go! Weirdo fascist freaks, come on. me out bro god damn i got nothing to farm right now anyways the more that engagement we get cooking all right the more of these i'll drop the faster they'll come out and so you'll start getting access to those older ones to those unreleased ones the ones i haven't released yet if you boost this shit you know you blast this shit. You tell your friends, yo, this guy is stupid as fuck. Check this out. You know? Then you'll get the unreleased tapes. The deep cuts. The dark tracks. You know what I mean? There's some interesting stuff in there too. It's mostly trash. But, you know what I mean? The world is trash. So, how bad can it really be? Let's be honest with ourselves. <laughs> Dude, that bad. I mean, it can only be as good as the world potentially is, which is not very good at all. It's really being trash isn't even that bad. Yeah, you know I mean. this new thing works, alright? I take walks, I rant on the walks, because I can't stop myself from ranting on the walks, and I record them on my phone, and then I put them on the internet with weird videos and some goofy ass improvised music, and you guys go, holy moly. You know what I mean? You say, wowie zowie. And you tell your friends, this guy's cooking, but he's an idiot. Alright, that's how these are gonna go. That's the little intro here. That's a little introduction to this type of content, you know? that premium around the way we're, we're one time around the block we're usually gonna do two or three you know two or three so the first half coming to an end here we're gonna transition into a little discussion just just if Kimi ni Todoke. that's what we're doing here this is still a manga channel don't worry manga readers manga enjoyers i will never leave manga behind it is deeply ingrained into my soul. Honestly, if I ever stop reading it, I don't know what I would be doing with my life. There have been periods in my life where I haven't been reading comics, and I haven't been making music, and I, I'm just depressed. <laughs> 
You know what I mean? I got no hope. Life is trash. But you give me one good comic, you hit, you hand me the guitar for 20 minutes, boom, I'm back. We're in it. Let's go. So, let's talk about some comics. Uh, Kimi Ni Tolike. Oh, I just uh, I just finished a reread event. One of my favorites of all time. Ten out of ten for me. Is it objectively a ten out of ten? Probably. It's one of those ones you can't grade in contemporary context, though. It's a historical work. <laughs> it is a historical work in reference to, like, the financial collapse of 2008. <laughs> I'm not even kidding you. I'm being so serious right now. The Lehman shock. As they call it. I like to call it the Riemann shock. <laughs> because in Japanese they say Riemann shock. Which sounds like Riemann shock. Which is funny. Because Riemann can go fuck himself. <laughs> the Riemann shock. That's what happened. When Riemann came up with this hypothesis. And the entire mathematical world was like. This piece of shit. You, dude. God damn it. <laughs> Stupid ass. You didn't have to do that, bro. Why'd you have to be like that, Riemann? Now we're talking about the Lehman shock. The 2008 financial crisis, which sent the world spiraling out of control. The remnants of which we are living with now the impact of which unquestionably inspired Tatsuki Fujimoto so let me go in a little bit here on uh on Kimi Ni Todeke. If you don't know it, if you've never read it, listening to the description, it might sound kind of boring, but I promise you it is so good. Because the premise is stupid. <laughs> I mean... I mean, the premise is basically, there's this girl, and she looks like the, uh, you know, the, I don't know if you call that the antagonist, it's not a monster, looks like the girl from The Ring, The Ring Girl, whose name is Sadako, Japanese name Sadako girl comes out the well you know you watch the video and then you die seven days and you see the ring you know the ring international smash hit really kicked off the japanese horror boom i don't remember when it came out but it did come out around the time of the financial crisis it was very popular that inspired adaptations of The Grudge and, and other, uh, you know, of this sort of more well known Japanese horror films. It really cemented Japanese horror in the minds of Westerners as like a real distinct genre with its own. Uh, milieu, its own style. 
All right, so we're talking about Sadako from the ring. Now this girl, her name is not Sadako. Her name is Sawako, which is like, her actual name is like very, you know, name meaning wise, it's like very fresh, uplifting, bright, you know? I'm not gonna tell you what the kanji are. You don't know how that works, but that's what it means basically, you know what I mean? You know, uh, cheery. Happy, that kind of vibes. Meanwhile, she's got the long black hair, the straight across bangs. Oof. Absolutely. Now, and then, my type. She's a teenager in the manga, so obviously, back in the day, I was like vibing. Now, she's a kid, I'm chilling very immature, annoying. But, but, honestly, going back to it, I had assumed it's not gonna hold up. You know what I mean? Oh, you know, back then, I was a teen, so I could identify with all this bullshit the stupid teen stuff that now when you're older you look back you're like eh you know those old shonen you read them you were 10 this shit was fire you come back to it you're like this kind of stupid doesn't really make sense honestly (laughs) you know what I mean Naruto (laughs) But it is what it is. Right? Oh man, Kimi Tolkien was not like that at all. Holy moly. It has only gotten better. Right, so the premise is basically this character is, you know, misunderstood due to some. Uh. uh imposition of this uh, stereotype of her character based on how she looks. <laughs> you know what I mean? Basically, people are racist against her, but not because of her race, just because she's got spooky vibes. More or less. Not in the systemic sense, just in the prejudicial sense. Right, systemically, she's actually kind of fine overall <laughs> which I have a lot to say about that but I'm going to say that in a Twitter thread stay tuned and you know it's a shoujo romance slice of life She's at, you know, the very bottom of the social rungs. She's been ostracized, excluded, because she's got spooky vibes. And she's shy. So she can't clear up the misunderstandings. Honestly, she sort of internalized the trauma of being excluded in this way for so long. But there's this one dude in her class, Kazehaya. Kazehaya Shota. Shota Kazehaya. And he is a hottie. And he's really nice to everybody. He's like a genuinely nice dude. Actual nice guy who is hot, which ugly nice guys on the internet hate. Because they are not nice. And the ugly. <laughs> so, you know, they hate that. But honestly, if you're like a normal dude, Kaze High is pretty relatable. Because he's just like nice people. He's like high school age. 
In middle school, you were probably a piece of shit. You don't have to hang on to that, though. <laughs> you can let it go. <laughs> Some people really hang on to their middle school selves. Like, they gotta defend how they were at age 12 with their life. It's like, that's literally the time of your life where, like, nothing you say matters and no one gives a shit about you. And if you've never moved on from those mindsets, I don't know what to tell you, bro. You gotta fucking go to therapy. It is what it is. You need some help. That's just how it is. Akaze Hai is just like a pretty normal dude. He's a little bit more outgoing and has that vibe of like a nice guy who got along with everybody. You know what I mean? He didn't discriminate. He doesn't like the bullies. He doesn't respect the social order, but he's so hot and cool that it doesn't matter. He can just fucking vibe his way through it. You know the type. They're kind of annoying, but you can't really dislike them because they're nice to you too. And you like them because they're they're chilling, vibing, good, good people, good person. You know? Pedro Pascal, I think that's his name. Is that the celebrity's name? I don't know, bro. He's like that. I mean, just like, damn. He's hot and good, dude. I should be jealous. But I'm not. Because, like, he deserves it, bro. Of course. 100%. He's the best. Alright, now, Sawako, she's in him protagonist she likes him because he's just like one of the few people who's like genuinely engages with her he connects with her not through this layer of her nickname sadako where he's like talking to her but he has to pass through these expectations and something's no he's talking to her like anybody like hey what's up who are you what are you like you know What's that about? What's up? <laughs> you know, that's what I'm talking about. Alright, great. Classic shoujo setup. Now, the thing that makes it so special in the context of the time and now, we gotta go around three times. I started talking about Kimi Toruke. I'm so lost. I thought this was going to be two times around. This is three times around. The thing that makes Kimi ni Todeke so, so special. Is... Something you would recognize now that was almost unheard of then is the way that it moves the slice of life romance story forward while still maintaining the momentum of the story. Revolutionary shit, right? Because back in the day, in shonen and shoujo seinen and josei historically generally got away with more sort of tight self-contained shorter stories one volume two volume things you know that's sort of always been the vibe in those they're not necessarily aiming for these you know, big hit pop long-running serials that you can milk for dramas and merch and toys and shit that's really more of the teen kids side right selling toys to kids getting dramas going for the tweens getting tv animes for the teens you know that shit right milk that ip we all know what that's like now in america 
that's old shit in Japan at this point, the media mix, as it has been called. Right, so the target, the goal, with that kind of mode of production, here I'm back on my bullshit again. <laughs> See, this is where the bullshit starts happening. Oh my god, shut the fuck up about the means of production. I will not. And this is not the means of production, this is the mode of production, but yes. The goal of this mode of production is, on the one hand, to make an interesting story so that people like it and buy it, right? That's prerequisite. But then once you meet that bar, you're trying to milk it out. You know, you're trying to run it so long, right? You want as many chapters as possible. So this is where you get the late 90s, early 1000s ultra slow burn <laughs> and there is one solution in this type of storytelling was to just do the harem thing This is the fruit basket or um, Hanuri Dango approach. Right? Yes, there's one slow burn. The main couple. Right? But then the point of the harem is not necessarily. I mean, on one hand, it's kind of a nice self inference. Like, oh man, all these hot people want to bang me. That's so cool. <laughs> Damn, I must be sick as fuck. There's a little bit of ego self insert, but a lot of the times, the really interesting harems, the ones that are like actually good, the main character actually is sort of not necessarily a blank, blank slate. They have a, a real story developing. I know, it definitely makes this story interesting, right? You have all these characters bouncing off each other, one central character that is changing through all these interactions, and because of the, that status is not a blank slate, actually makes the story fucking interesting, a- instead of just being like vignettes again about random hot people, which is okay. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't put that down, necessarily. You know, your otome game. Your, your harem anime. You know what I mean? That kind of shit. It can be okay. But it's kind of boring. (laughs) Usually. The interesting ones. Hanori Dango. Fruits Basket. uh, Love Hina. uh, uh, And the Shonen ones are, are pretty bad a lot. Uh... I forgot. Look, the actually interesting ones of those are like uh, they, they have more twit than than just the harem. Right? But the reason that this uh, format is good is because you can do the slow burn thing. You can do the mainline romance. But you can drag it out. You know what I mean? You can run that shit forever. Because you, you got all these other stories going on at the same time. You got the main couple, their whole vibe. That's the main one. You know what I mean? That's the slow burn. But you need a little, you need a, you need a few more weeks, you need a couple months of content rolling out to keep the pigs happy. 
like, you know, oh, it's time for the side story. Now suddenly everybody's riled up. They're doing wars in the forums about who should win. We just got our side arc. You main shippers are done for. <laughs> Peak. Peak fiction. Right? Oh man, the fruits basket. Woo! The fruits basket. Dude. Oh man, Team Yuki. What happened, bro? <laughs> Get wrecked, honestly. Kill game. Anyway, you always knew it was real. What do you gotta say? Nothing. It's peak. Move on. She always liked the cat. That's how it is. Get fucked. <laughs> okay. I gotta pull out. This is about Kibidi Totoke. <laughs> Holy shit. I'm a 32-year-old man. Moving on. So, this is sort of like the main vibe of the big hits. This is the structure du jour. There's some like normal slow burns, but damn, they are slow burns. They tend to be comedies, right? Like Kaito a Maid Summer. It has kind of this goofy, silly premise that lets it do a bunch of like comedy stuff to sort of drag things out. It's not really inherent, it's just kind of a slow burn, classic slow burn comedy slice of life but that comedy element sort of like keeps it going lets it have its energy as a work as a story without necessarily advancing the main plot very much (laughs) (laughs) it was monthly at the time so there's that aspect of it too Either monthly or bi-weekly, I, I can't remember. I think it was monthly. So I, I'm waiting for chapters to drop. Like, oh my god! And then we're probably like, Bruh! Bruh! Right, so the monthly schedule is a part of it, but even so, man, like <laughs> normally, the setup you have, you got the shy girl who struggles express herself and the cool hot dude who's trying to get through to her but she doesn't get it and he's still a teen so he doesn't get it and it's just talking past each other lack of confidence doubt misunderstanding and you just run that shit like until the end You just run it. You just let it go. You just turn it on and go, money machine. All right, and if it hits and the dude's hot enough, you're set, you're chilling. You're kicked up for life. It's over. You have the bag and you milk your pigs for everything. Not Kimi ni Todeke. Not Kimi ni Todeke. Kimi ni Todeke is built different. It is built in a way you recognize now that was not really done back in the day (laughs) you know early spoiler they spend main couple spends most of the time in the story as a couple like I want to say like 85 86 percent of the story they are together that's what I'm talking about. Like most of the time is after they have it. Come to terms with their feelings, express their feelings, developed a romantic relationship, and are now in that relationship. 
that shouldn't be a slow burn, right? You're talking, oh, okay, this thing probably got 30 chapters, 40 chapters, Uh -uh uh-uh-uh, no, 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 120 chapters, slow burn type shit, oh, but it's so good. I don't really understand how it works. It's magical. People have tried to do it again. They can't do it. But one of the things Kimi Toike really did was like push push the boundary of like physical intimacy and the concept of like actually dating in shoujo in like a shoujo magazine like actually teen dating which does involve physical intimacy sorry I know I'm like old (laughs) old talk about physical intimacy between teens alright hold on now okay go ahead and cancel me and then come back but that's real. I was a teen. I did the things, okay? All you teens, maybe some of you haven't, but some of you have. Okay, it happens. It's real. It's a real thing. Real part of human existence. Actual real shit. You know, nowadays, that's pretty normalized in shoujo world, you know, and slice of life romance overall. We got stuff like Fly Me to the Moon. We got stuff like uh, Horimiya. On the shoulder side, you got Yamada, right, which is popping off right now. Which goes way further than Kimi Totoke, way faster. <laughs> uh, Yugi Sector Ren Ren, very popular. Lots of people doing it, bring it up to the college level. Because, I mean, that's pretty normal, too. I mean, you don't have to, like, go for this. Uh, maybe overly aggressive narrative of like everybody's fucking in high school kind of thing you know plenty of people start doing that kind of shit in college they do like some like you know low grade dating in high school is not really a real thing they go to college and they have more intimate emotional physical connections with people most people hitting that thing it's also a little less weird because <laughs> the characters are you know older it's not maybe as a reader but Kimi Toike has a lot of that now it's not you know by today's standards it's pretty tame it's not that deep but at the time even like you know the strong suggestion was like ooh, a little spicy ooh I don't know about that and Kimi told totally K it definitely happens it's not on screen you know again things have changed a lot since then things are different now but that's honestly because of Kimi Nitoke in a lot of ways the Kimi Nitoke it's not a suggestion it's off screen yes but it's a hundred percent there's no shot right we know what happens the implications are clear it's not stated for editorial purposes but it definitely goes down a couple times between different people. Now, in the end, Kimi Totoke is very sort of pure hearted, very sort of fluffy, positive. This isn't toxic shit. This isn't, you know, clamp stuff, alright? This is, you know, still you're very positive. Uh, high-minded moral shoujo manga but it's more real it's more grounded it engages more in the realities and complexities 
of like an actual relationship that you would have, how things can be really good, how things can go wrong, what kind of steps you have to take to fix these issues, issues that you can't fix that you just have to address openly together, that kind of shit. I mean, it's pure gas. It's so good. (laughs) It's insanely good. And looking back on it now, being older, coming back to it, not from the perspective of a teen, from someone who's through on the other side of teens, who's had these kind of intimate relationships as an adult and, you know, gone through more stuff as an adult, even the team you told the takes you through because it has a distinct stopping point for the relationship i mean just and it's the story at a point i won't tell you what goes down it's not really like a shocking twist kind of manga but you go read it for yourself you know you enjoy the journey But looking back on it, it's it's even better. It's better than it was. So many of the things it's talking about as a teen, I didn't understand. I didn't get it. I appreciated the emotional impact and the drama of the story, but the message that it held and the importance of that message, the true significance of what it was talking about, I did not really understand. this is a manga you read as someone maybe at the end of college maybe you're out of college getting your first job you read it and you look back on it and you say ah damn I wish <laughs> I wish I had figured this shit out when I was 18 you know damn so real ah uh, Tauko's so lucky that she's getting this through her mindset so early on in her life that's why she's the goat that's why she's the red god that's why she's the mary sue of all time but she's real you know she's not a mary sue of like she's just good because she's a mary sue because she goes through the struggles that you need to go through as she makes it through the other side as she learns as she understands and you wish you had learned and understood like she did back in those days because she's right now there are aspects of it that are you know unrealistic in a very specific way which i'm going to go into especially you know everybody just kind of has the circumstances they need to do what they want to do in their life in some way which is not really a real thing so sort of the the self-actualization uh the self-actualization side is completely divorced from the systemic realities of society oh god on so much bullshit right now (laughs) but that side of it is ideal it's ideals it's not real that's where Tatsuki Fujimoto comes in uh, we'll, we'll come back to that though again twitter thread incoming stay tuned oh god oh, my nose running am i allergic now do i have allergies now please no dude <laughs> COVID give me allergies. No! My whole life I've never had pollen issues. Maybe pollen is just up, bro. I've heard pollen stocks are up probably because of global warming. Usually, you know what I mean? I'm bringing global warming back. Climate change bullshit. It's getting hotter. It's global warming. Fucking dumbass. <laughs> but it gets cold. Oh, okay. Oh. Uh, what's an average, dude? I don't know. I don't know what average is. What do you think? I passed fifth grade? Didn't. I did. Passed it a few times. 
I've done laps around fifth grade, okay? And speaking of grades, Kimi Todake gets to do this because it captures another story structure, which is just the natural passage of time. It just goes from first year, second year, third year. The high school progression just follows that structure and it doesn't slow burn it. It's a natural progression of an honest relationship through that time period. And so it has to engage with kind of like physical and emotional intimacy that you would have in a relationship like that, really. And it manages to, while still towing the extremely conservative editorial guidelines of the day. But by pushing those boundaries, not in an extreme way, but just pushing them, it manages to tell the story of, yes, an idealized, but ultimately grounded relationship between two young people and how they come to terms with each other and themselves in terms of that relationship and their relationships with their friends. The friends' side stories are super important, super impactful, super meaningful as well. Didn't have time to go into all that. I don't know if I'll ever go into all that. It's crazy. It's complicated. It's rich. It's deep. It's real. It's honest. It's true. You wish that was you back in the day, but you were too stupid. (laughs) You were not like Sadako, she's built different, Sadako's the best, has more riz than you, cooler than your favorite, hotter than your Oshi, it is what it is, get fucked, Kimi Toike, 10 and 10, number one all time, greatest shoujo slice of life romance ever, historical, significant, important, this was the very first evening walk today in the afternoon that's right trendsetter life-changing here we are it is what it is i'm back at the house i've gone around three times this is almost an hour that's some good exercise go get some exercise yourself read community told the k come back to me and i'll see you next time thank you all for listening good night